morning, great few friends. Thanks for joining us today, this uh, first Sunday in October. We've been walking our way through Romans 12. We first of all talked about God's grace and mercy, which required that we offer our whole selves back to God as a grateful act of worship. Part of that offering of our whole selves means that we are called to resist the patterns of this world that take us away or call us to worship those things, many other things other than God. And we've been transformed by the renewing of our minds, replacing old patterns and ways of thinking with new ones that are centered around Jesus. Then we're reminded that Paul is not just talking pie-in-the-sky spirituality here. He's speaking directly to the Roman Christians and what's happening in their fellowship. The old patterns of thinking are still influencing their relationships. (laughs) That's where Paul says, do not think more highly of yourselves than you ought. And he says that we are interconnected, interdependent. We all need each other. We mentioned that we have all been given grace gifts that we need to share with one another. We need to use them, these gifts given by God, for the building up of the body, not for tearing down. I suggested that these were Paul's thoughts on the renovation that's required in our hearts, in our minds, in our bodies. If we're offering ourselves if that offering is to be more than just kind of warm, fuzzy, spiritual thing. Um, And so our old ways of thinking and acting need to be deconstructed, taken apart, reshaped and renovated. And I suggested last week that renovation takes time and intentionality. And we will resist the things that God wants to shift and change in our lives. That's... That's, we don't like the change that God wants to do in us. But let's remember for a moment who Paul's writing to. The Christians in Rome. These Jewish and Roman believers. These two ethnic communities in their churches there in Rome have been struggling amongst themselves about who's more mature? Who's the stronger Christian? Who's the weaker Christian? That's the nature of the conflict that Paul's responding to. And so Paul has just spent the first 11 chapters of Romans spelling out how, in the end, these Jewish and Roman believers are all on the same level ground before the cross because of God's grace and mercy. And here in chapter 12, Paul is saying, okay, now now let's get to the stuff that really matters. (laughs) Are you prepared to offer yourselves wholly to God in grateful worship and to one another as brothers and sisters in Christ? Last week at the end of my message, I read these next verses. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. That genuine or sincere love, as Paul calls it, is not a one-time achievement. Something we have to pay attention to day in and day out. Paul is, is concerned that the Roman problem, he's just spent 11 chapters telling them about what the issues are, but he's concerned that that same problem is going to keep poking its head up again and again and again. Yes, we've had our great worship time. We've offered ourselves to God. We share our gifts with one another. We renew our minds and put aside these inferior, superior spirituality, thoughts and habits. We're doing pretty good. (laughs) And then next week they just pop up again. Paul says we need genuine or sincere love Not a two-faced love that says this thing one thing day and this another. Not a mixed message, but true, genuine love. 
But that urging to sincere love is not the end of what he wants to say. In fact, this here is the whole paragraph, and Paul gives some specific direction for how we exercise this love. So, love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what's good, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves, and then he carries on. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. So that's, that's the complete paragraph. That's Paul's complete thought. And so he's connecting love and honoring one another together with spiritual fervor or vitality. If you want to demonstrate your real spiritual vitality, your spiritual strength, remember that's what the issue is, who's the stronger? You want to demonstrate your real spiritual strength, then be devoted to one another. This is serving the Lord. The Jewish Christians thought their spiritual heritage gave them higher status amongst the Christians. And the Roman Christians thought that their social standing, this is our hometown, this is our city, gave them high status in the fellowship believers. And Paul says, just get off of those things. Forget about that, whose heritage, whose status, etc. Demonstrate your spiritual fervor, your strength, we might say, through your attitudes towards one another. Be joyful. Encourage one another toward hope. Be patient with one another in the midst of struggles or ill health. Don't lift up who's the more spiritual Christian or who's the weaker Christian in times of struggle. Be faithful in prayer for one another. That's a powerful tool for loving one another. Will I pray for this person? Be generous with those in need. Practice hospitality. Welcome those who are different from you into your homes. That's literally what hospitality is. This is sincere love. The outward demonstration of an inner attitude. Not an outer face and an inner position. It's the two match each other. That's sincerity. A transformed and renewed mind, fully surrendered to God, that will be the home of this sincere love. The last section of, of chapter 12 here takes a, a bit of a change of tone. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. <laughs> For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you'll heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's how Paul ends this thought that starts with, offer yourselves fully. For the most part, it's, pretty easy to demonstrate love when things are going well. <laughs> but that's not how we live all the time. We don't live in a perfect world. And that's certainly the case in Rome as Paul is writing this letter. The believers are in conflict with one another. They've had this experience of the Emperor Claudius throwing them out of of the city of Rome. Many of the Jewish Christians had to leave Rome. And so this is a, a place of turmoil and some of it has to do with this conflict amongst themselves. And so these verses here now encourage us to keep extending love 
in times of conflict, when, when there's enemies and victims and people who persecute you, in times of disagreement, even when people have a campaign against you, keep extending love. So today, as, as I'm recording this, is actually Friday, uh, September 30th, and this is our, our National Day for Truth and Reconciliation here in Canada. Uh, I'm wearing my orange shirt here. Uh, a day to honor the lost children and survivors of the residential schools and their families. It's a day to acknowledge and better understand the history and the harms that have been done to our First Nations peoples and to engage in actions that bring truth and reconciliation to the forefront. So as I was preparing my message this week, I was thinking of the ways the Christians in Rome were describing each other as weaker or stronger in the faith. And that, that got me thinking about the way our society thinks of people who are weaker or stronger, those who are superior, those who are inferior. The way we humans do this to one another is not a new problem. Human beings have been doing this from the beginning of human interactions, at the beginning of time. We might say that this is part of our broken DNA that makes us think, well, I'm superior to them. Our challenge in Canada is the story of how Christians were often the ones who thought poorly of the First Nations who were here before us and often it was people in Christian name who acted unjustly towards our First Nations. So that history is part of the reason that many Canadians <laughs> reject the faith that we practice today. And so that's why we do need to continually pay attention to these words. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. When I wear a, an orange shirt, I wear it actually to remind me that the people of God have a responsibility to live in a different manner than the society around us because of the grace and the mercy that God has extended to us. It's a reminder to me that Christians have had a, a testimony that is difficult to defend and we need to acknowledge and repent. Jesus offered himself as redeemer for the brokenness of our world. And then we are called to offer ourselves to him. And by his spirit, he will renew us and transform us. We demonstrate that work of transformation in our lives by the love that we show for one another. And by our desire to live at peace with everyone around us. It's sometimes, you know, easy enough to show love to people that we like. But we're called to live at peace with everyone, even those that we may have some struggles with. But the way that we live as a Christian community, as the Grapeview family, as Christians in this city... That is our testimony. That's the story of the faith, the story of who Jesus is, what he's done in our lives. The way that we conduct ourselves as the people of God is our testimony. That's our true word about what Jesus has done in our lives. And so this Sunday, we will 
come to our communion table in our live service. And a reminder once again of the life that Christ has offered to us, freely given with love when we didn't deserve it, and we're called to offer back. On our website here, the song just below my message is, I give you my heart. And it's that call to continually turn ourselves, our lives over to Jesus. But it's a reminder again at the table what he did for us and what we are called to do with one another in the body of believers, but also in our larger world, um, neighborhoods, our country. And so I trust this week that as you walk with the Lord Jesus, as the Spirit gives direction to your life day by day, that this call to set aside our us and them, thinking superior of, thinking that I'm weaker than, to put those aside, we are all on the same ground before the cross of Jesus Christ. Let's take a hold of that as then we offer love that's been demonstrated to us back to those around us. The Lord be with you, friends. Have a good week. We'll talk again.